The political crisis in Iraq reached new heights as supporters of Muqtada al-Sadr stormed the Iraqi parliament for the second time in a week and began an indefinite sit-in on Sunday, July 31st. The protesters opposing government formation efforts of Mohammad Shia al-Sudani stormed the high security green zone in Baghdad to demand the cancellation of his prime ministership. At least 125 people including protesters and security personnel were injured when the security forces tried to stop them from entering the zone. The protesters are supporters of Muqtada al-Sadr who had opposed Sudani's nomination claiming that he is corrupt and close to former prime minister Nouri al-Maliki. On Wednesday, Sadr had asked his supporters to leave the high security zone after a few hours claiming that their message had been conveyed. However, on Sunday he called on his supporters for an indefinite sit-in inside the parliament calling it a demonstration against corruption, quotas and subordination. Sadar asserted that this demonstration was a golden opportunity to fundamentally change the political system and the constitution of the country. Protesters claim that consensus-based government formation and the sectarian quota of power sharing are the core reasons for inefficiency and widespread corruption in the country. The Iraqi Communist Party reiterated the demand for the abolition of the sectarian quota system and demanded holding of early elections in which the final say will be for the people. Iraq has been reeling under a political standoff following the elections in October 2021. Even though Al-Sadr's bloc won 74 seats making it the largest faction in the 329 seat parliament, he was unable to form the government. He did not have the super majority of two thirds, which is a requirement to elect a president. Following his failure to form a government, he ordered the members of the Sadrist movement to resign in June 2022. So in early June, Muqtada Sadr showed signs of like anger and instability, and he actually stormed off stage and told his supporters he was angry at them. And then several days after that, he ordered his members of parliament to resign in a move that was quite. Um, unprecedented. So, Muqtada was angry at actually the Emiratis. He thought the Emiratis were messing with him because they had reached a separate understanding with the resistance factions in Iraq after the Houthis hit the UAE from Iraq and it led the Emiratis to reach this like like I mentioned political and financial understanding with Iraqi resistance factions. and they kind of sort of banned it abandoned muqtada at least it's how muqtada said it so it's all so the emiratis were also quite shocked by sadr like blo- uh like th- that that sadr's block resigned um and then moreover muqtada sadr didn't expect halbusi who's the iraqi like speaker of parliament to accept the resignation he thought it was just he initially thought this was just a move to get some attention he didn't accept that ex- uh, like he didn't expect that halbusi would so quickly accept the resignation but it turns out the emiratis had actually called halbusi and told him they want him to accept the resignations halbusi actually didn't want to do that but he did it under pressure from the emiratis uh so it was understood that they had made this deal with iran and the other shias to basically protect emirati interests or interests and muqtada was not happy with this so as a result members of the framework the dominant shia parties uh aside not including muqtada gained do- dominance over parliament and proceeded with the political process as if sadr didn't control the country's largest and bloodiest militia and so on everybody's mind was this concern that muqtada would send his men on the street and cause violence but uh militating against this was the fact that he would have no religious or political legitimacy for this kind of move you know he gained the largest share in parliament he tried and failed to form a government um his own sunni and kurdish allies did not cooperate and he couldn't persuade the independents and so he took the seemingly political politically suicidal decision to order his mp's to resign So provoking violence would have would be like rejected completely by the Shia clerical establishment in Najaf and the Iraqi population. So all of this said, you know, this has been happening in Iraq. Nobody's really certain what Muqtada's goal is. You know, some say he wants the framework uh to call for early elections, but then the framework will make the new election law and the new election commission and so Muqtada will be blocked in the coming elections. Others say he wants to bring the system down, but he can't do it by force for the reasons I mentioned. You know, and the Shia factions are actually stronger than Muqtada if he's out of the government. 
if he's in the government, you know, he has the state behind him so he can take on the factions. But it's also possible that Maktada made a terrible blunder, which it's increasingly looking that way, uh, which is what many Shia political uh, elites in Iraq believe, and that he harmed his own interest. And it's important to remember, you know, Maktada Sadr, he's not just a politician. He's a religious leader. He has like huge cultural influence. He has this massive movement behind him. And he has aspirations that are larger than just mere politics. I mean, his control of his street did start to dwindle after the 2019 and 2020 protests. And actually the turnout to his protests and gatherings was less than in the past, but he still is a very uh, powerful, strong cultural and religious character in Iraq. The recent protests were triggered following the nomination of Mohammad Shia al Sudani as the new prime minister by the coordination framework led by Maliki's state of law and popular mobilization forces, Fatah Alliance. Sudani was the Minister of Human Rights during Maliki's premiership from 2010 to 2014. Iraqis have been demonstrating against the country's political system and the ruling elite for several years now. Demonstrations have taken place demanding changes in the constitution that was formed after the US-led invasion in 2003.